um, before I kick off. Here we go. Yeah. So um, as Kate said, I, I work for Mind. Um, I've been working for Mind for the last six years, but oh, too many years now working in uh, in sort of charities and inclusion sports. So actually, my first job was part funded by the Activity Alliance um, Disability uh, uh, sports job back in the day. So this is sort of really, I'm really passionate about this and bringing together sort of the work around wellbeing. I did do my boccia level one, but that was quite a few years ago now. So I've always been a fan of boccia and uh, certainly I had 10 years at the National Deaf Children's Society and I used to play it with my kids. So um, don't ask me too much about the rules, but um, I have a lot of uh, respect for the, the sport and what you do. And I certainly something I've always um, been promoting. So it has been a really challenging uh, year, um, as Kate said, and I think the conversation around mental health has never been so important. And so I think it's really positive that you're taking some time this evening to talk about mental health, but also to have a look at some of the ways that you can um, support your, your own mental health. It's really timely because next week is um, Time to Talk Day um, on the 4th of February. Um, and that's our national day where we get the, the nation talking about mental health. We want people to talk about mental health every day, but it's, it's quite a big um, day. So I just wanted to sort of start by saying this is a safe space. I'm not going to ask you to disclose anything you don't want to. Um, but we also know that it can be sometimes what we would call triggering. Sometimes I'll talk, do a little bit of content about mental health and then we'll talk about the positive things we can do. Um, so if you need to take any time out, that's fine. You want to turn your camera off, don't worry about it. Um, just, just check in with us that, you know, we, we want to check that you're okay at the end of the session. And I'm very happy to stay on at the end if anyone wants to sort of chat to me, like one to one or anything. Really, really happy to do that. Um, so I've got some slides. I will try and share them. I'm not the best at technology, so bear with me. Um, oh, we don't want that slide yet. Bear with me a second. Um, and to be honest, we'll probably do a mixture of using the slides, having a chat, and, and everything um, in between, if that's all right. Oh. Yep. Oh, apologies. Press the wrong button again. Here we go. All right, mate. No, sorry. Right, my computer's just having a little bit of a meltdown. Close your eyes. There we go. Um, so, um, just uh, wanted to say, I'm sure you're all familiar with Zoom. Um, if you could pop yourself on mute, that'd be great. And then if you want to unmute yourself to have a chat, you've got a question, you want to use the chat box, feel free to, to use that. Um, and as I say, if, if you want to use your camera and see your face, that's great. If you're in your pyjamas and you don't, that's completely fine too. So the most important thing is that you feel um, at ease during the session, really. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at these things. So we're going to have a look at mental well-being and mental health have a chat to find ways that you look after your own mental health and how you support your, your club members and explore the five ways to well-being. We're going to look at this thing called mental health stigma and this um, the concern people have about sharing uh, how they're feeling and hopefully we can break down the stigma. There's nothing like talking about mental health to, to, to breaking that down and kind of finish up uh, with signposting to some resources and um, some professional mental health support. So we are not expecting you to um, become mental health experts in one hour. This isn't a therapy session. I'm really sorry, folks, if you're hoping for a therapy session, we're not doing that tonight, um, but I can signpost you to, to help and support. And it's not really a replacement for training, but hopefully you'll, you'll come away with some tools and tactics that, that you can use um, in your club. So I just wanted to start by asking, how are you feeling today? But how are you really feeling? You know, we get asked this question a lot, how are you feeling? And you say, oh, all right. But how are you really feel it, feeling right here and right now? So we're going to use my scale of um, one being awful, really bad day, uh, five in the middle somewhere, and uh, ten sort of on top of the world, a really good day. And you can use any number in between. So you can either um, add in the chat box, unmute yourself, wave at me, write it down, whatever works for you to think about how you're feeling and if there's any reasons why you're feeling that way. So I will just stop sharing so I can see you in the chat box. Um, so yeah, how, how are we doing? How are we feeling today? 
Well, I'm a million dollars. Oh, a million dollars. Put a number on it, yeah. Roy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. You know, it's, uh, yes, it's, you know, you're inside and that sort of thing, but I've got dogs and um, we get out and walk with them and feel really, really good. And then coming on here and doing bits and pieces and keeping Natalie busy. So, uh, yeah, other than that, I'm really, really fine. Fantastic. That's good to hear. Um, so you're a 10 or a 10 plus somewhere, probably. We've got a six there. Georgina's feeling tired. It's been a long day. Yeah, I could be seven, 12 minutes past seven. Long, long day. I'm, I can I can feel you. Natalie's feeling a bit sprightly after a run. George, a bit fed up of lockdown. Oh, I hear that completely. Um, I probably, Caitlin. Oh, Caitlin's going to go with a six as well. Yeah, I'm probably feeling feeling about an eight I like doing this talking to people but if you'd asked me two hours ago I probably would have been like a two so you know we go up and down that every day but I just wanted to say you know it has been a, a roller coaster for everyone and um, some people have absolutely been thriving so for some people they've got to spend more time at home more time with their family they've not had to travel um, maybe um, they've had sort of chance to pick up hobbies and interests and do things but we also know some people have found it really hard to survive you know plans being cancelled um, trips being postponed the Olympics uh, people on furlough money troubles we're hearing lots of people um, really struggling around sort of finances not being able to see our friends and family and you know I know that's one that's really got for me I'm I'm from Cambridge here I'm originally I'm a I'm from the Fens uh, oh, back yeah. in the day <laughs> I'm from the Fens um, but I live in Wolverhampton so I've I've really felt that um but also the worries around Covid and things so I think it's fair to say we've been on this roller coaster it's been really really up and down but wanted to say that you know we are in the middle of a pandemic it's impacted on us all. So it's really important that we, we are gentle um, with ourselves. And I guess that's that's what tonight is is all about, giving ourselves a break. So I want to make sure we're just all on the same page. I'm sure we are. Um, but I will share, attempt to share my presentation again. Um, here we go. Oh. And uh, talk about the fact that we've all got mental health. So. You know, just as we've all got physical health, I'm sure you're, you're very aware we've all got mental health. Um, we're on this spectrum from uh, thriving, where we've got good mental health, where it's really, you know, things are going well, life is good, we're feeling great, to surviving, you know. We, um, uh, and sometimes that means having poor mental health and sometimes being unwell and maybe having a mental health problem. So we're all on that continuum. We've all got it. People say mental health and they automatically think illness or problem, but we've all got it. We just don't like talking about it. So we have good days and bad days. And sometimes we go up and down that in one day. But when our um, mental health gets in the way, when it stops us doing things that we enjoy, when it impacts on our relationships, on our work, on our, on our things that we, we like to do, that's when it becomes um, a problem. So at Mind, we use the um, World Health Organization's um, definition. So it's a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, and can work productively, fruitfully, and can make a contribution to his or her community. So it is a spectrum. For some reason, the slide hasn't shown, but that's fine. I will send them around to you afterwards. Um, but we know there's lots of diagnosis and labels and as I say I'm not going to go into um, all of that now um, because this isn't a training course but just wanted to say you know this it's, it's, it's really difficult you know there's lots of things that cause our, our mental health to, to take a dip um, it, you know it could be life events periods of ongoing stress change and certainty relationships all sorts of things can, can trigger our mental health it can be biological um, so it could be something you know that we don't know about uh, in terms of our biology. Um, it can be social, the things in our uh, environment as well, or psychological. So it's really, really complex. Um, and we have lots and lots of different ways that we, we deal with it in terms of healthy and, and less healthy coping strategies. Uh, no worries um, that we're late there. Welcome, welcome. I'm Hayley. We're just, we're just getting uh, started. Fab. Okay, 
So um, just briefly before we, we talk about some sort of good strategies and I've got some activities and hopefully make it interactive, just wanted to quickly talk about stress um, because I think it's fair to say it's probably been the most stressful year of a lot of people's lives. Um, so some of you might have seen this before and this is sometimes known as the pressure performance curve um, and I want to talk about stress because it can really sort of lead to uh, a mental health problem. So stress itself isn't a medical diagnosis, um, but it's very, very closely linked to our mental health. So stress, if it's not dealt with, can cause mental health problems, most commonly anxiety and depression. Um, and it can make existing mental health problems worse. Um, so if you're not dealing with those, those symptoms, it, it can, really, um, can really exacerbate things. Also, mental health problems can cause stress. So if you're, um, if you're dealing with the day-to-day -day, um, things around having a mental health problem, all the appointments, the medication, the treatment, just the, the challenges around life, that can also um, cause stress. So it's kind of interrelated. So we, we, we do try and um, talk about it. So um, just sort of wanting to sort of think about this, this curve. So we're starting at the, the, uh, the bottom uh, left corner. So where we, we don't have um, any sort of pressure, so uh, pressure can be really helpful for us to, to get things done and to, um, to keep us engaged. When we don't have any pressure in our lives, we can feel a bit bored and a bit deflated and, you know, it's, you know don't get much done, it's not very interesting. As we increase the level of pressure, we can see our performance increases. So I'm sure you've all heard about the comfort zone before and you know we like to be in our comfort zone and that's really that's kind of our happy place if we're at work or if we're volunteering and we're doing a task that we know well and we, we're comfortable with it then you know we've got a little bit of pressure um, and, and our performance is, is increasing. The issue that we get is in this stretch zone. This stretch zone is, um, is a great, the blue. It's where we've got a little bit more pressure. We're being encouraged to do something perhaps we haven't done before. It's out of our comfort zone. We've got to give a big talk or presentation or there's a big competition coming up or something like that. Our performance level goes up because we've got that adrenaline pumping. Um, you know, we're perhaps working to some tight deadlines and we've got to get things done. Um, and that can see really good performance. That's great, but we can't be in that stretch zone for very long. So what we should be doing is going back into our comfort zone to um, relax and recuperate. But what we see sometimes, and we see it a lot, we see it in workplaces, we see it in volunteering, we see it in daily life, is that the pressure keeps building and maybe we're juggling lots and lots of things in our lives and maybe when things start going wrong and the balls stop dropping, um, we start to get strain and, and that can be a real challenge because we haven't had time for our, our minds and our bodies to, to rest and um, repair and that's when we can lead to a, a crisis or, or burnout when you know, we just you know, we can no longer function um, at all because of that and that's the sort of the, the red zone for our, our mental health in particular. So I guess the message is a little bit of pressure is good for us. It gets things done. Um, it can be it can be really positive to challenge ourselves and set goals. But we also need to come back into that, that comfort zone and uh, rest and um, recuperate. Sometimes when you're really stressed, and if you kind of look back at periods in your life when you were really stressed and lots going on, you don't necessarily recognise what's happening and people might try and talk to you about it. Um, and I think it's something that we all learn about when we need to take a, a step back um, and do something about it. And, and it, you know, knowing that it's OK to, to ask for help. And I guess the reason I wanted to sort of bring this up is we've certainly seen it working with lots of different sports. Like right now, we know um, both staff and volunteers, some are, are, are feeling really pressured to keep things going. And, and life, as we know, it's been thrown upside down. Everything's different. Our, how we interact with people is different. Um, how we um, spend our, our leisure time is different and we're trying to keep things going. Um, but actually that, that can be uh, at the expense of ourselves. So making sure that although we're very committed and passionate, making sure that we take a break, taking, you know, taking some holiday, even if it's holiday at home or time to ourselves, um, knowing when, you know, knowing when to say no to things um, is really, really important. So I guess the key takeaway is we need a good level of pressure to perform, 
but we can't be in that stretch zone for too long so we need to get back and, and think about how we rest and recuperate. I've just got one more quick slide on, on stress and you might have seen this before um, or, or versions of it and we talk about lots of different like imagery with mental health and stress. Um, so this is our, our stress bucket and um, we've all got different, different sizes um, of buckets. Uh, we might have multiple buckets and sort of the stresses and the challenges of day-to-day -day life, all those things um, kind of go, go into the bucket and you'll see our, our tap there. And you know, what we need is um, that tap helps to relieve the, the water and we can have um, good working ways of letting the stress out that are positive. Um, but sometimes some of the ways that we, we deal with that can be, um, can be less healthy for us. And we'll, we'll talk about those in just a second. If we don't let that out, the water's gonna overflow. And there's, there's different analogies around cups overflowing and uh, you know, fizzy bottles, you know, fizzy bottles. That get, if you keep shaking it and shaking it, it needs time to rest. And, and we're exactly the same. So um, we've, I'm sure you've all heard of the, the saying that the straw that broke the camel's back, um, and, and it really can be. So knowing what, what makes, makes you tick really is really, really important. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing a second so I can see your lovely faces. Um, welcome everyone that's uh, just joined. We're just having a chat about stress of all things. Um, but just wondered if anyone's got any ideas about sort of the, the bad coping strategies or, or less healthy. I don't like calling them good and bad. Um, I prefer to say sort of less healthy ways that we, we might deal with stress and, and strains. You don't have to talk about yourself here. Any, anyone got anything in the chat box? Any, uh, we certainly know at mine, sometimes people will eat too much or drink, uh, or drink too much or too little. Any other ideas? I don't think we get stress in lockdown. I mean, I don't think we get any stress in lockdown. You don't think there's any stress in botcha? No. No, oh, that's, that's good to hear. How about in daily life right now? Anything sort of, the news, is that causing you, you know? Yeah, like not, not being able to play. Not being able to play. So the fact that the thing that you do that you enjoy and it's probably really good, I'm guessing, for your social connections and your mental yeah. health is taken away. So that's, that's stressful, isn't it? Mm. So yeah, George has popped, popped in the boxer uh, yeah self-harming and that's a spectrum as well so uh, we talked about the mental health spectrum and self-harming can look different for different people so it can be drinking too much alcohol or working too much like working too hard that's that's a form of self-harm as well as some of the other ways people act hurting themselves through different methods shouting anger yeah getting angry those definitely <laughs> If he's reading my mind, <laughs> you know I was going to say. So George is on it there. Okay. So there's there's that. So there's less healthy things, and then there's healthy things. And certainly we know, we know that sadly during this time, from our research, more people have been using some of those unhealthy coping strategies, and not, not just adults, young people as well. So increased use of alcohol. You know, it's great, you know, and I'm not here to judge or if you have a glass of wine or a beer at the, you know, at the end of a stressful day. But for some people, it just becomes a crutch. Um, we've seen that um, and, and drugs and self-harm, particularly with young people as well. So it's really important that we all think about the positive ways as, as well that we can look after ourselves. So we're going to come on to those in just a minute. But I just wanted to ask, um, start talking to you about how you take care of yourself and what you've been doing in, in Botcher. So talk a lot about self-care uh, in mental health and sort of well-being circles and you know some people will think it's a load of mumbo jumbo or it's not for me or um but can anyone remember going on a plane like it feels like a long time ago anyone remember going on a plane yeah oh, yeah yeah feels a while ago doesn't it like we've been yeah, seeing that is that the last time you was on a plane for the Paralympics? Yeah, okay. for the Paralympics. Wow, that, that is very impressive. So can anyone remember what, an, uh, what the, um, the uh, flight attendants tell us to do with our oxygen masks? So in the event that there is, a, you know, 
the oxygen masks come, come down, what do they tell us to do? Put your own on first. Put your own on first before helping other people. And that is exactly what we're talking about, self-care. You can't help someone else um, if, if you're not helping yourself first. So it's something that's not mumbo jumbo. It's not just all about retreats and yoga and, um, and, and you know, all those things, which may be very nice, but doing the little things in life that can, can help us to look after ourselves. Because if we're, we're no good, um, if we don't look after ourselves, we're no good for anyone else. So I guess just wanted to sort of um, hear from you what kind of things you've been doing um, in, in Boccia or in your clubs to look after um, your mental health? Like tournaments. Doing tournaments online, is that? Yeah. Like tournaments online. <laughs> My club has like a tournament now online. Well, they're not very fun, but I feel with a heel um, play online. Fantastic. So you've been you've been connecting through our amazing technology. Um, mm. in the chat box we've got regular engagement, virtual social activities. Kate's been getting outside, lots of walks. Yeah, lots of walks. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, for me it's kind of just getting out, even if it's not for long, just being out in the fresh air almost and away from screens and phones and all sorts and just having a bit of a walk whether it's with the kids or my own or whatever just escaping the house fantastic and getting out in nature so i remember in the first lockdown everyone was saying stuff like i can hear the birds and like the birds have just magically appeared they're always there but with the traffic and everything else going on we often don't hear them or we don't notice them as well but we're outside more so yeah anyone got anything else they've been doing with their groups or individually i think um communication has been i don't know whether i've not really heard anything back from our members but i think for us as, as volunteers and coaches actually communicating with people um, and just realizing that when you all get together, even though it is on Zoom or Teams, and it's not even though it's not the same, it's nice to still know that everyone's in the same boat. It's a bit rubbish for everyone at the minute, and being able to catch up with people not in the same way as before. But I think just communicating with people is really helpful because um, it's so easy to feel lonely. I think. Oh, 100%. That connection's incredibly powerful. I saw lots of you nodding your heads there, and that sounds like you've really um, benefited from that. Yeah, going, going, on, going on to the fact, you know, um, Zoom meetings, I've had business with all my athletes and conversations. I kept, you know, I've kept um, meeting them and um, on, on the computer and also answers and things and they ask me questions and giving them you know answers and just keeping up with them all the time you know and uh, i i've got a, a virtual um um <laughs> a blind association i work with and uh, you know contact them and uh, i've had a uh, lots of conversations with an italian fella today and he's on his own and everything else and Unfortunately, he's got a daughter that has uh, got cancer. His son died early in the year, so you know he was grateful for that. You know, it's just nice to keep in communication with them. You know, his power of connection, I think, is absolutely, absolutely key. Uh, well, I was going to say, right? Yeah, every Tuesday, I think I like every Tuesday. We meet our team in the morning, like PA. George was doing a team break, like every person was doing a team break, and if we ask it, we won't be having any team break. So that's what the main thing is. We think our um, part, like our, our friends online, like every team break. So I think, Roy, I think you know for the team break, do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Roy got those in the King's Break. George yeah. was in the King's Break. But that's what the that's what they got to me. Like before the out. So the power of those tea breaks I've heard about sounds sounds fantastic in terms yeah. of bringing you together. 
and yeah. going into that give me that structure because I guess also structure like in you know you normally have your training and your competitions and you know I don't know about you but my um uh, I'm a, I'm a, I run and that's what I, I do and I volunteer for a mental well-being group in in Wolverhampton and you know my calendar is just like got quite empty and those things have gone away so it's been about finding other things to to fit in there so that you can like you say connect on <laughs> Wolverhampton and the Fens, so I'm i have split loyalties here. Um, okay, so there's there's lots of ways um, that we can we can look after ourselves. Um, and I guess if I asked you if I asked you what your five a day are, what would you what would you tell me? It's not a trick question. Anyone? No, your five a day. <laughs> I uh, fruit, fruit and veg. Fruit and veg, yeah. I'm not trying to catch you out. So everybody, actually, everyone talks about their five a day. Fruit and veg, completely. I think actually we need more than five fruit uh, no, a day. No, I think no. it's like seven or twelve. Or, I don't know. But if I ask you what your five a day is for your mental health, anyone know? No. Okay. Shall I? Shall I tell you? Let's get those slides back. Um, and we'll look at some evidence ways and then we've got some activities to try out and we'll we'll see what you think about these so as as we go um let's get the slides back oh. we've talked about that okay so this is uh, five ways to well-being so um a, an organization called the new economics foundation looked at all the many many different ways that people um, take care of their, their mental health and uh, people far cleverer than me researchers looked at all the different hundreds of ways and they managed to sort of group them into these these five themes and it's a bit like your fruit and veg a day for your mental health so these are the five things that, that we should all try and build into our uh, daily lives to strengthen our mental health and I think you've kind of touched on quite a few of them already but just to sort of explain so the first one is is all about connecting so we are very social animals we are we are pack animals really um, and actually we don't do so well being on our own and being being isolated so you know social relationships and, and building those together actually build a buffer for our mental health so if um, um, thinking about if you've had a bad day or something's gone wrong I guess there's lots of us, most of us might pick up the phone, old fashioned, I know, or FaceTime or text someone, whether that's a partner, parent, friend, to kind of talk to them about how we're feeling. And that's that's kind of, it's, it's one of the key things that we do. So those relationships, so you talked about meeting each other online, about the tournaments that you've been playing, around making sure, even though it's not the same, building that connection online is, is absolutely critical and for our mental health. And that's why there's been such a push around supporting people that have been shielding or that are living on their own or, or isolated. Um, so many befriending services and the NHS responders to make sure that we can support that and actually that little chat, that conversation with your neighbour when you've been out clap, clapping for carers or um, when you've seen someone in the street, it might be the only time that they've been spoken to that day and generally sometimes we're not feeling very chatty but often by the time we've had that chat after walking the dog or whatever it is, actually just put a little bit of a smile on our face. Um, it's also important to say when uh, we're now in this very online world sometimes we need to disconnect if you've been on zoom calls all day and you've been barraged at work or um, lots of things going on sometimes actually leaving the phone at home when you go on your walk and just having an hour for you um, can just be as important so I don't know what it's like when you're on competition but I imagine from my experiences of being on events and being a volunteer or, or being in charge is that you know it's, it's quite overwhelming and then at the end of it sometimes you just want to get in your bedroom so you don't have to talk to anyone for an hour or so and so connecting is really important but sometimes disconnect as well okay and um, so being active um, we know is is incredibly important for your mental health can reduce your risk of depression by up to 30% it lifts your mood, the endorphins that get going, um, it can help you to cope with stress better. So doing a little bit of activity and movement actually puts a little bit of stress on your body. 
so it helps you to balance those cortisol levels a bit better so building in some some activity or movement whatever you can do can be really really helpful for for your mental mental health so whether it's dancing in the kitchen um getting outside for a bit whatever it might be having a good stretch all, all really helps with your, your mental health so the third one take notice any ideas what that's about anyone anyone feeling brave take notice is your surroundings yeah about so, um, like being self-aware yeah so reflection yeah So this is, um, so there's a lot of talk at the moment about mindfulness and it is about taking notice of, of yourself, how you're feeling, how you're feeling, um, how your body's feeling, how your mind's feeling, but also the world around you. Um, and so that can really strengthen and broaden your awareness and sort of being in the moment. So savouring the moment. Quite often we go onto autopilot. I don't know if anyone's ever, um, for those of you that drive, got in the car, driven somewhere. And then either not realise how you got there or driven to the wrong place because you've just gone on autopilot. Roy's laughing, Roy's done this. It's because we spend so much time on autopilot. We don't think about these things. Um, and we don't go, I'm getting in the car now. I'm turning the engine. Um, but sometimes um, we need to just take a moment and really think about um, what we're doing. So it can be um can be around sort of breathing exercises and taking notice of how your body feels it can be taking some time just to think about the things that you were grateful for so especially in this in this wonky world as i call it um thinking you know actually i can't do all those things but actually i've i've had a really nice conversation today i've met this nice person online I've, um, I don't know, whatever, had something through the post. It can be the really small things um, that really um, help you to sort of take notice of, of how you're feeling. It can be about being out in nature, all those things, noticing the seasons, having a nice, last night I had a nice, um, a nice yogurt, a uh, Cadbury's cream egg yogurt that had been given to me by a neighbour. And he works, he works there or something. And actually just enjoying it rather than just eating it, watching the telly, just actually going, oh, it's nice and savouring it. So all those things. OK, last couple then. Um, learn. So um, this, this doesn't have to be learning a whole new skill. Some of you might have done that through lockdown, but um, it's, it's about sort of setting a goal and achieving it gives you self-confidence and improves your self-esteem. So that feeling that you get when you've... Um, mastered some things so it might be um um i don't know as a crossword and you've completed it and you get that little fist pump and you go yes i've done it or fix something yourself or whatever it might be um you you've read about something online and you thought, oh yeah um that that really lifts your your confidence and, and your self-esteem particularly when you you've set a goal so Again, proven to help out our mental well-being could be an online class, reading a book, learning a new word. I didn't know what furlough meant before this year. When they first started talking about it in March, I Googled it. I've learned lots of language, lots of words this year. I've also learned a lot about um, science and, and uh, I'm sure we all have, like feel like we're experts around vaccines now. So all those things gives you, gives you confidence. Okay, and then finally, before we get on to some activities, um, uh, give. So this is about not just, it's not about giving you money, although that's very nice if you do give to charity, but it's about giving, giving your time. And I know many of you are here, you're volunteers, so you do this already. But it's, it's proven that being part of um, uh, community life has uh, improved your, your mental health and your happiness. So volunteers rate themselves as happier. Um, and actually, the giving bit is probably the strongest bit of these five ways to well-being um, in terms of, you know, if you do acts of kindness, you give someone a compliment, you know, you get that little warm glow when you've done something nice. I sent some little care packs out to, to my team and got little messages back from them. And it, even as I was making it, it was it was quite mindful doing it. And then really nice that feeling that you get back. So proven to um increase your your happiness and your, and your mental health so thinking about those little little things that you can do but also that you can do with your participants as well has anyone got any questions before we move on to some activities no? okay 
Okay, so I wondered how, I've got a couple of activities to do. Um, some are more mindful, most of them are more mindful. But I wondered if there was an activity that you guys did to warm up at Botcher. Um, these are the We Are Undefeatable um, five in five, so they're like one minute activities. And we could do one of these. I wondered if there was a quick one minute activity that any of you guys had that we could do um, here and now just to see if we can get the endorphins going. Is anyone feeling brave? If not, we'll have to pick one from, from here. We've got some coaches on the call. <laughs> Let's get rid of the screen. Anyone got an activity we could do? One minute activity. Feeling brave? Would anyone like to do the activity? I'm not going to force you to do anything that you don't want to do. That would not be very good for a wellbeing session, would it? They've all gone very quiet and shy on me. How about we could do either some neck rolls to, um, so we go from one shoulder to the other and then back. Or if someone wanted to do some arms, yeah? And if you want, don't want to do it, don't do it because it's going to be the shortest. I'll try and make it less than a minute. Bear with me. Just to see if we can get our bodies moving. I should have prepared my time there. Learning for next time, Hayley. Are we ready? So I'll let you choose. If you're doing your neck, just be really careful that we go one way and then the other. So really gentle. We could do some arms. Three two one let's give it some some go so we do some arms round or your neck or whatever you feel comfortable doing and feel like the longest it's a long way if you want to do a different activity and check it in that's fine i can't do this if you haven't moved your arms the other way we'll do the other way if you're doing your neck you could also do some chin to chest the other way. We've got some smiles going on. Oh, my arms are aching already. One minute, it's been a long time, isn't it? There's lots on We Are Undefeatable. So we've got each other smiling, almost there. Trying to look at the time. Or tap and touch, that's a good one. Tap and touch. My arms are aching. 10 seconds. We're feeling a bit more energized. Nice and gentle. Three, two, one, stop. You get the idea. So lots of even really quick things that you can do. I'm sure you've got lots. But it, checking it into your sessions or if you're doing stuff virtually, I know you guys can do, do lots with your activities. But um, always good to check them in when you've got a meeting or a training event as well. Okay. So uh, let's think. How are we at the taking notice one? Does anyone do anything to take notice? So you talked to me a lot about connecting online, you talked about walking outside. Anyone do any breathing, exercises, meditation? Yeah, when, I, when, I, when I go out with my dogs, because at this moment in time, I've uh, actually hurt my back. Um, they're all just sitting around and, uh, and uh, I have a bad back anyway, uh, through many years, one thing, uh, too much sport. Um, and when I go out with the dog, you know, he'll, he wants to go on a bit further. So I'll go on with him just for a short way, you know, a short sort of not run. I can't run these days. <laughs> the whole feet won't allow me, but yeah. And just do a bit and then slow down and everything else and quick and slow and that sort of thing. You know, I've exercised all my life. So at the moment I'm actually under the chiropractor as well. That's where I'm going tomorrow to the chiropractor after the dentist. Yeah. Oh goodness, you've got quite a day, haven't you? So you're, you're de definitely getting active outside. You're you're in the moment. You're with your animal, your your dog. Um, yeah. Pets are great therapy. I think I'm surprised my dog's got any fur left on him sometimes. But um, stroking is proven to release stress. So oh. with those things, fantastic. Okay, well let's let's have a look at a couple of activities, and I'll send these round to you um as well don't worry i'm not going to do a uh, a yoga session or anything right now um here we go 
So yeah, there's lots of things you can do to take notice. Some people keep a journal or think about three things that was positive at the end of their day, uh, th uh, three things that they're thankful, thankful for, breathing activities, the stuff that you can get on your phone. There's lots and lots of different things online that you can do. Um, focusing on breathing out can be really helpful. Um, particularly, I, I really struggle with this because I, I, um, I have my own mental health problems and I struggle with panic attacks. So some of the breathing exercises I can find quite panicky, but actually they, they can be really, really good. Um, a couple of ones I'll quickly show you. So this is our worry tree. Um, so when you've got things on your mind and you're struggling to switch off, um, this can be really helpful. So really just thinking through and working through these questions. So thinking about if there's anything you can do about it. Um, if there is, making a plan and then uh, putting that plan in action so that you can you can then let go of it. If it's outside of your control, uh, as they say in Frozen, let it go. I'm not going to sing at you. Oh. <laughs> and changing the focus of your um, attention. So it can be just a useful tool and you can use this for someone particularly if they're sort of struggling and things are going over and over and they're kind of, there's a problem on their mind or on your mind or whoever's and you can say, well, can you do anything? Is it in your control? And sometimes just um, being really in the moment, in the here and now writing things down before bed if, if it's on your mind, just getting it out and, and down on paper can be really helpful. This one's our breathing window. So again, can just help you um, in the moment, to be in the moment and take some time. So it can just take 90 seconds to manage a really strong emotional response. So some things upset you or made you angry or annoyed you, which is perfectly normal, that's okay, that happens. Um, but just finding a square uh, shape in the room and then following it round with your eyes, breathing out, in and out as you go. So taking in that breath and then out. And if you can, in through the nose, out through the mouth. So following it around a window, just that 90 seconds. Um, can really just help in terms of um, managing that, that situation. So this is something you can uh, you can use, we can send it out, you can print it off, you put it by your desk. Um, and a couple of others, because I'm conscious of time, because we could talk about this all night, there's so much stuff, um, is a stress scan. So it's just really, again, taking the, the 90 seconds of scanning your body from your head to the uh, head to your toes. So, you know, sitting quietly and just thinking about, you know, how is your neck feeling? How is your shoulders? Are they tense? Often we get very tense. And then going down the body um, as you go along. So your back and your chest, your hips, your legs, your knees, thinking about how your breathing is all the way down and just thinking about your your mind and your mood and just see how how you're feeling in that moment so there's lots of different scripts and i'll, I'll send a few bits um over and it's just another one um because of time i won't go through it but um this is where you can just inhale and uh, tense up something in your body and then let it release it so that tense and release and back when i used to do training and used to work with lots of uh, um uh, volunteers and um, that tense if you tense and then relax your body instantly relaxes elsewhere not just in your hand so uh, tense and relax can be really really helpful um to get rid of that tension so just really little simple things there's loads of stuff out there there's loads of stuff online um but as sporty folk um, in my experience of doing this job don't tend to be so good at this taking notice one so this is the one that we need to do a little bit more work on okay so um, just wanted to quickly, before we wrap up for the night, um, talk about why it's good to talk. Um, the age old saying, a problem shared is a problem half. Um, and really one in four of us, one in four people will experience mental health problems each year. And we know from actually through talking about it, it, it that's, a, that's a huge help. Just listening and talking can for some people um, really help to relieve that that feeling that they're, they're going through and, and the strain and it's really about is just listening so that we can understand and not like fix all of their problems at all so I've got a really quick film hopefully it'll work because George gave me a good tip on how to do this so fingers crossed George no pressure oh. 
Oh, this is so nice out here, isn't it? Yeah. You all right, mate? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Sometimes, humans say they're fine when they're not. But with one in four experiencing a mental health problem, to really find out, ask twice. You sure you're all right? Well, actually, I could do with some help. OK. Well, let's talk about it. Yeah, do you mind? So hopefully the sound worked then. I think it did. Do you hear it okay? Yeah. Good, had a few little smiles there. I like that film. So that's um, from our uh, colleagues at Time to Change. And we are very British. We ask that question, how are you? Lots of times a day and we all answer. We're pre-programmed, we're very British. We say, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. But if someone says, really, how are you? Often they might get a different response and we might talk to them about how we're feeling. So, I guess really just saying, um, you know, it's about getting the conversation started. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a huge, deep, a meaningful conversation uh, and someone saying, I'm worried about your mental health. But, uh, you know, most of the uh, most conversations start with, you know, how are you doing? How's the weather? You know, those kind of things just just to kick off. And I think now more than ever, just checking in with people, whether it's friends, family, your athletes, whoever your neighbour, someone you've not heard from for a while, just, just checking in how, how they're doing and not being expected to solve someone's problems. You can't fix, fix things for people. They have to do it themselves. But you can just listen. And then, like you would with other things, we're not all brain surgeons and we're not all COVID experts. We, we say, actually, do you think you should go to the doctor about that? Exactly the same with our mental health, signposting people on. So just checking in with with everyone is is really really important so um i think i mentioned that so yeah, you don't need to be an expert um talking about everyday things and just sometimes the best things we can do is a just be there or b just offer to help with something really practical so if another volunteer is probably a bit overloaded and you know there's lots of things going on in their life right now just offering to do one of the things they normally do for them might might just be enough to to help um, so I mentioned next uh, Thursday is Time to Talk Day. So this is uh, where we start big conversations. So there's lots of things happening online. We've got some really good resources. We've got bingo sheets. We've got um, little um, quiz activities, like would you rather do this or this? Um, like funny little games you can play um, with, with your mates, with your athletes, um, to start that conversation. It's all about the power of small and so a small conversation can make a big difference so that's that's coming up and then a couple more slides and then we'll just um go to any questions um but i just wanted to flag um some resources that are there for you and your your teams and everyone that you you work with um so we're here as mine to support everyone um, so whether you are struggling with your mental health or whether you just want to look after your mental health better or you're, you, you care for somebody or you're concerned um, so we have lots of information and our coronavirus toolkit has grown massively during this time so we've got lots of different resources on, on our website um, and many have been tailored specifically around the, the pandemic as well. So if ever um, you're in doubt, you can just signpost to the, the MIND website. There's also activities and there's little breathing activities and different things on there um, as well that you, you can find. So lots and lots on there. We've put together some resources aimed more at the sport and physical activity sector. So my team does, does that. We, we work on getting people active for their mental health. Um, so we've got some nice um, posters and infographics, particularly around returning to play because we returned and then well, some of us returned and some didn't. And um, so um, they, they might be helpful and really about helping people to come back in a way that suits them when they're ready. Um, and, and with support because we know it's really difficult. I know 50% 50, 50 of people told us um, in our big survey of 16,000 not having access to sport has really impacted on their, on their mental health. Um, and then we've got lots of resources, we've got an info line, um, newsletters and all sorts of training events and things. So we work with Sports England. Um, 
and really want to get more people active for their mental health but also help everyone in sport to feel a bit more confident about mental health so um as i said at the start don't expect you to be an expert so um there is lots of support out there so if someone um it might be yourself or someone you know is struggling with their mental health it's gone on for more than a few days you know a few couple of weeks or more um there's there's support out there um both from mind but also from um from our gps and nhs 111 they've just set up special mental health support on that number um during lockdown and shout is really good that, that's a tech service that people don't necessarily know about and samaritans so anyone can call samaritans you don't have to be feeling suicidal you might just want someone to talk to um so yeah they're there 24 7 um and then we've got online peer support as well so they're they're just some of the places that you can you can use um to support people so we've talked a lot about positive mental health before i wrap up does anyone have any questions anything you want to try yeah, this well, I, I have um i have a comment thank you very much indeed it was really really beneficial um and i would love to have a lot of your resources that you've shown us tonight so i can use when i'm with my zoom meeting that sort of thing so if you're recording it are we going to get it through katie or yep so we will send the recording we'll also send um the powerpoint and i will dig out the, some of the resources that i didn't use i've got so many um i'll dig out some of the things as like breathing um body scan scripts yes. and things that you could use you could read them out to your group and things so yeah i can yeah. send those through this is why, that's why i intend to do so thank you very much indeed Welcome. Roy, we intend to pass all this on through the club. So we we talked today actually about creating a, a wellbeing page on the website at Botcher England as well um, to house because we've been doing quite a lot of stuff through the self care Sunday, but it would be good to kind of collate that and put it all in one place. So um, we'll make sure we've included the links and a lot of the information will be signposted through Mind. It's not going to be Botcher England stuff, but we'll be signposting elsewhere. So we'll share all that. Okay, great stuff. Lovely. Thank you very much, Kate. You're very welcome. Any other questions, comments, reflections before we wrap up? I like the activity. I think there's there's not enough physical activity going on for a sports organisation. I'm talking from a Botcher England point of view. We're sat at the desk all the time. So I think next team's meeting we'll have, we'll be up on our feet or doing some exercises beforehand. We had a meeting today, though. We did pause for non-screen time for about 20 minutes between... Uh, we were there for about two and a half hours, so we made we made an effort what to do that. that. Down the pub. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah. One day. Oh, it's it's hard, isn't it? Building in the different things, but thinking about it, I guess my sort of takeaway message is: we've all got mental health. It's really important that you look after it. Think of your uh, them as your five a day. So also perhaps have a bit of self reflection about which ones. Some of them you probably do lots of. But actually, do you fit in the other ones? And could you just, you know, even a minute, 90 seconds can make a, a big difference um, in terms of your, your well-being. So I guess I just wanted to finish and ask if there was one thing that you would do to take care of your well-being um, today. Um, we are running out of today because it's nearly um, bedtime. Um, but just to leave you with a thought, if you want to share it, you, you may. But if not, really encourage you to think about one savour in the moment, having a nice cup of tea or hot chocolate, as I'm going to go and have in a moment. Um, but think about what you can do for your wellbeing today. And I'm a big fan of this artist, uh, the latest Kate. So she, there's many, many um, artists that do a lot of really positive mental health stuff out there. This is one. And um, so I just wanted to say we are in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, it is just a, a tough time. So make sure you, you take care of yourselves and you're doing a great job um, uh, at Botcher England and looking after your athletes. So thank you for having me. And um, it's lovely, lovely to meet you all virtually. Thank you very much, Hayley. That was brilliant. And I think everyone else has um, engaged and enjoyed it. So thank you so much for your time this evening. Really appreciate it. And it would be great to share all the stuff, um, the, the recording from tonight, the resources. And this is the start. You know, we've, we've done some things around supporting and engaging people, but we want to continue this this work that we're doing around supporting well-being. So we'll, we'll, we're trying to do more at Botcher England. 
um, and capture that. And uh, thank you very much for helping out this evening. It's been brilliant. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Well, enjoy the rest of your evenings and um, go do your one thing. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Guys, thanks. See you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Hayley. Yeah.